stop fighting limerence. So this might sound controversial, but there is an element to accepting that limerence is happening. And even though, you know, I suggest and there are others uh, online who suggest ways of dealing with limerence and overcoming limerence, there shouldn't be a fight between you and the limerence. And this is true of any emotion or experience. If you are resistant to what's happening and you're fighting it, there is this antagonistic nature that you develop with yourself. You're basically fighting yourself. And what happens when you fight something? When you fight someone else or anything, it takes energy, planning, it's draining, and there is pain involved. There's hurt when you fight. By the way, I'm Marius. I'm a counselling psychology doctoral student living in London. And on this channel, we talk about limerence, psychology, some pop culture stuff. I'm exploring, hopefully you'll stick around to explore with me too. So if you're fighting yourself, you're essentially beating yourself up and you're less equipped to deal with what you're actually going through. It's counterintuitive because you want to improve your life and change things and you want to move past the limerence. But if you're constantly judging yourself for having it and hating every element of the limerence in a way that reflects on you, then you are just making yourself weaker in the process of healing. I understand that this can be a confusing idea as to accept it. Like, what does that mean? How do I accept limerence? It's so awful. So I agree. The thing is about it is you don't need to allow something to take over your life in order to accept it, right? So in the same way, anxiety happens. So anxiety is something that can be present all the time or in certain situations. And if you judge yourself for being anxious and for going through that, then you're not only dealing with the anxiety itself, you're also down on yourself for being someone who has anxiety, which is so it's like a double whammy, right? Limerence is the same or anything really is the same. Resistance creates more pain. So when it comes to experiencing limerence and being with limerence, trying to accept the fact that it's happening can happen at the same time as wanting to get better. You can want to get better and be here with the feeling of limerence and not falling into the narrative of self-judgment, not going into the, God, well, why can't I just get through this? I'm so pathetic for going through this. And this is so sad. And this is such a waste of time. You can accept those feelings happening as well. You know, the judgments, like you don't need to reject those either, but don't get caught up so much in the battle and the judgment. If you judge yourself and you judge the experience that you're going through too heavily, ironically, you're not gonna be able to move on. Even though it feels like you're fixing, right? It's like I'm identifying the thing that's wrong with me. And if I identify the thing that's wrong with me enough and hate it enough and put enough energy in pushing against it, that it will disappear. That's just not the case. It's not the case by itself, let's say. And if anything, I think it holds you back. So the more you can open up to the experience that you're going through, the more you can allow healing to happen. A good way of reframing this is to think about someone else who's going through limerence. So you know what it means to go through limerence, I assume. So let's say you weren't right now, let's say you got over it, but you have the knowledge of what it's like to go through it. If someone you deeply cared about was going through it there and then, would you tell them that they're pathetic for going through this? Would you tell them that this is a complete waste of time, stop it, this is silly, what's wrong with you, move on, this is taking too long? No, you wouldn't. Well, I hope you wouldn't. You wouldn't say that to someone you love because that's not gonna help them. Some people have this idea of, oh, it's a wake up call. I'm not saying wake up calls never work. They can work. But having this tone of judgment creates a worse self image and people who have a bad self image are not particularly more likely to work towards better for themselves. They just feel worse about who they are and what they're going through. So you can be honest and call things what they are at the same time as being accepting and supportive of what's happening. So let's go back to this idea of the friend who has limerence. If your friend has limerence, I would hope you'd be able to say, I know how difficult this is for you. I'm sorry that you're going through it. I don't know how long this is gonna last for you. I know it's isolating, and I know this is taking over an incredible amount of your life, and I'm sorry about that. And I'm here with you, but we're just gonna be here with that thing. We're gonna be here for as long as it takes for this thing to pass, for you to heal, and for you to be more content with what's happening in your life and be more compassionate with yourself. If you can be there with that person and be accepting of them as they are, that's what they need. When people say, oh, I, I felt like you truly listened. I know that you were really there for me. What you were really there for me to me it means they were present, they felt like they were present, they understood, they were empathic, and they weren't there to say, hey, here's the five top tips of getting over limerence. There's a time and place for that, okay? Like it helps to have tips and techniques. And if I didn't think it wasn't possible to get over limerence, what would be the point of talking about it like this? So it's okay to get into the techniques and all of that, but it's also good to be with yourself in a way 
that is supportive and embracing. That doesn't mean that you let it take over the entirety of your experience, because that's not going to help either, of course. But that's not what acceptance is about. So don't fool yourself into thinking, if I accept who I am, that I'm letting my current state be the forever state for me. This is what my whole life will be about. That's not what this means. It means that even though there is stuff about this current experience that I do not like, even though there are things that I hope don't last much longer than they do, I need to be accepting that they are there because they are there, really. And if you're not accepting of what's happening with yourself, in truth, you're in denial right? You're saying, I won't accept who I am. I won't accept my life until X, Y, Z, until limerence is gone, until I'm happier somehow. But the thing is, you can just be present, accepting and loving of yourself and your experience right now. You don't need to wait until it changes to be all those things. How do you do that? I would recommend that you see someone who's a qualified therapist in your area, in your country, and go and see them if you can. I know that therapy can be a bit expensive. There are cheaper options. So do your work and then find out what will be available to you. But of course, remember that therapists are not all created equally in the sense that they won't all connect with you in the same way. They're, they're just people. They're, they have different trainings, different ways of dealing with things, and they're just separate people to you. So not all of those connections will work. So don't quit the first time you find someone. Try and reconnect with other things that are important to you in your life. Art, your job, you know, things that are not just the limerence. So you can start to build more of a definition of your life and yourself outside of this limerence. And also experiment with meditation. It doesn't need to be a heavy, like 20 minute thing. So try two minutes and try some prompt that's going to keep you focused for long enough. Something that I find helpful is when emotions are getting really intense, is just to say, can I sit 30 seconds, whatever it is, don't set the mark too high. Um, meditation feels like a really heavy kind of undertaking and it can be, but keep the threshold as low as necessary for you to get into it. So if it has to be 30 seconds, do it and just say, right, well, I'm feeling, let's say the limerent object is not giving me any attention, but we're in the same room. I would sit there with that feeling and say, this feels like a hopelessness. This feels like an emptiness in my chest. Can I sit with that? Can I be with that feeling? Or am I trying to run away from that feeling? Am I trying to distract myself? And maybe at first I do want to distract myself. I want to run away. I want to move out of this room. I want to not be able to see them. I want to look at something on my computer or do something that will distract me. But can I sit here? Can I see if I can just sit here with it instead? Actually, yeah, maybe I can. See, even that exercise means that you are getting closer to accepting the reality of the feelings that you're having there and then. So if you can do that, that would be one step getting closer to accepting how you're feeling and accepting limerence in general. Thanks for watching. Look after yourself.